If you work in a factory, warehouse, or on a construction site, you know how important it is to safely lift, move, stack, and store raw materials or finished product. Powered industrial trucks or forklifts are the workhorses often used to get these jobs done. And as with any piece of equipment being used on the job, safe operating procedures are a must. A forklift being operated by an inexperienced or poorly trained employee can lead to accidents, injuries, or even death. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, requires that forklift operators receive safety training before operating any type of forklift. When an employee comes to a new job with previous forklift experience, additional training is not required if the operator is evaluated by the company and found to be competent. However, forklift operators must be retrained when new equipment is introduced, existing equipment is modified, operating conditions change, or the operator's performance is unsatisfactory. In addition, each forklift operator's performance must be evaluated at least once every three years. There may be a number of different types of forklifts in the workplace. Having untrained operators can create hazards. Falling loads caused by overloading, unbalanced loads, or improper loading. Loads stacked too high, obstructing the operator's view. Falls from a platform, curb, trailer, or other surface. Forklifts operating too fast. And improper maintenance. This program is intended to help you qualify as an authorized forklift operator at your company. Proper forklift training is very important because you as the operator are not only responsible for yourself, your cargo, the forklift, but you're also responsible for everyone around you. And uh, the, the machine that you're operating is a very expensive, very heavy piece of machinery and you should treat it with respect and caution. Before operating any forklift, you must become familiar with the location and function of the controls, the location and operation of the power plant, steering and maneuvering, visibility, inspection and maintenance, and other general operating functions. Let's start with the pre-operation inspection. This must be done by you, the operator, before starting your shift. Begin by walking around the forklift. Check the condition of the tires. If they are pneumatic tires, check for correct pressure. Also look for excessive wear. Inspect hoses, belts, and cables for cracks or signs of excessive wear. Inspect the forks for surface cracks, bad or cracked welds. Check fluid levels. Using three points of contact, climb onto the vehicle to continue your inspection. Check any safety equipment to make sure it's working properly. Turn the ignition on. Familiarize yourself with the controls. Check all gauges, warning lights, battery or fuel levels. Sound the horn. Test the lights. Raise and lower the forks. Test the brakes. Check the steering and backup alarm. After the forklift has been inspected, Move it from its inspection position and check the floor for fluid leaks. If you find anything wrong during your inspection, you must not operate the forklift until repairs have been made. OSHA does not require written documentation of the daily inspection, but a checklist can help ensure that no steps in the inspection are accidentally overlooked. It's important to recognize that operating a forklift is much different than operating a car. Looks can be deceiving, and here's why. A large counterweight mounted on the forklift ensures that the weight of the load and the weight of the forklift will remain in balance at all times. So while a forklift is probably smaller than your car, it can be up to two to three times heavier. Automobiles have a four-point suspension system. Forklifts use a three-point suspension. In order for the forklift to remain stable, the center of gravity must remain inside a triangle formed by these three points of suspension. However, the weight, height, or position of the forklift's load, as well as its travel speed, can shift the center of gravity. And if the center of gravity exits the triangle, the forklift becomes unstable and may tip over. Another difference between a forklift and a car is maneuverability. Automobiles steer from the front. Forklifts steer from the rear allowing them to turn in a much tighter radius. However, 
the rear end of the forklift will swing outward when cornering, so you must move to the inside when making a tight turn. One of the things that I mentioned to operators of forklifts is that they keep in mind that, the, that a forklift pivots on its inside drive tires. So many times people think about the steer tires being on the back of the forklift. Uh, what's important that they remember is that it pivots on the inside drive tire. Uh, just like a marching band when they go to go around a corner, the person that's on the inside of that corner has to basically mark time. The person that's on the outside of the corner has to take very long strides in, in order to make the corner evenly. When braking, the weight of the forklift and its load must also be taken into consideration. It's not as easy as stopping a car, so give yourself plenty of time to react by driving slowly in the first place. Once you understand the characteristics of the forklift, you're almost ready to go. But first, a good thing to do is read the operator's manual. Don't forget to read the warning labels, nameplate data, and other instructions on the forklift. Information about load capacity and other important safety reminders are found here. Always mount or dismount by facing the unit using three points of contact at all times. Never jump on or off a forklift. If the forklift has a seat belt, wear it. In case of a tip over, the seat belt will keep you within the protective framework of the unit. If you try to jump off during a tip over, you could be thrown under the forklift or the load. This can be deadly. Before starting the forklift, re-familiarize yourself with the location of the controls. Never attempt to operate any piece of equipment that you're not familiar with. The operator's position is the only place from which you should start a forklift. Never start it while standing alongside or from any other position. Before using a forklift, there are several workplace hazards you should be aware of. Rough, uneven or sloped surfaces, loads of unusual size, traveling in hazardous areas, maneuvering in narrow aisles, and operating near pedestrians. In an indoor setting, such as a warehouse, the floors are usually smooth. It is suggested that you raise the height of the forks about two to four inches. Always travel with the forks and the load at the lowest safe height. Bumps, seams, or uneven terrain along your route may require a slight fork adjustment. Always drive the authorized plant speed limit or slower, as good judgment would dictate. Keep your body inside the lines of the forklift. A hand wrapped around an overhead guard can be a pinch hazard. When driving a forklift, even an unloaded one, your visibility is restricted. You will encounter blind spots. Always check to make sure no one is in your path before moving. Pedestrians always have the right of way. Sound the horn at blind intersections and proceed slowly. It's important that operators understand that proper horn usage is important. Uh, and proper horn usage will vary from work site or work situation uh, from one to another. Uh, sometimes a friendly toot toot is adequate, sometimes a longer, louder, uh, perhaps even a maximum decibel blast is important. Uh, if, if, there, if your sight is obstructed, if there's many hazards nearby, uh, more horn use, louder horn use is necessary. Keep a distance of three truck lengths between forklifts. Never pass another forklift. Slow down on wet or slippery floors. And never allow riders unless authorized to do so. Before picking up a load, make sure you know exactly what you'll be lifting. When determining the center of gravity, there's a big difference between a load of paper and a heavy off-center item like a boat. Make sure the load does not exceed the capacity of the forklift. The capacity is listed on the identification plate and in the operator's manual. Check to see that the load is balanced and secure. If the load will have to be raised, check for overhead obstructions. There must be sufficient headroom under overhead installations such as lights, pipes, or sprinkler systems. The fork should be centered to evenly distribute the weight of the load. Next, drop the forks to the floor and slowly position them under the load, driving forward until the load is resting against the mast. Tilt the load back slightly 
then lift. The forklift should be completely stopped before the load is raised or lowered. Back out slowly to clear racks or other obstacles. Then lower the load to the safe traveling height, about two to four inches off the floor. Never travel with the load raised or raise the load to see under it while moving. Use a smooth sweeping motion when turning the steering wheel. Remember that when accelerating, turning corners or braking, the forklift's center of gravity will shift. Always travel at a slow, controlled speed. Going too fast can cause the load to spill or the forklift to tip over. If the load is large and blocks your view, travel in reverse. When placing the load, the operator should stop the forklift in front of the desired location. Slowly raise the load to the required height. One important point, never allow anyone to walk under a raised load. Position the load for placement and then tilt the load forward to level it. Lower the load. It must be placed square and straight. Once it's settled, back up slowly. Do not turn the forklift or change the fork height until you are certain that the forks are clear of the pallet. Also, remember to look for pedestrians or other obstacles before backing. If working with unusually shaped loads, you must be aware of any special stacking requirements before you pick up the load. Never drive into an elevator, truck, trailer, or rail car unless authorized to do so. Remember, forklifts are extremely heavy and you must make sure the floor will support the weight of the unit. Make sure the dock plate is secure and in good condition. During the loading or unloading process, repeated crossings may cause it to shift. Remember to check it often. Check the floor for loose, missing, or broken planks. If it looks unsafe, don't drive in. Another important consideration is how well the trailer or rail car is secured. Many forklift operators have been injured or killed when the vehicle moved away from the loading dock at the same moment that the forklift entered it. It is your responsibility to make sure the vehicle has been properly secured before attempting to load or unload it. All wheel chocks should be in place. If a dock lock or other restraint is present, make sure it's engaged. If the tractor is not attached, Check for jacks in front of the trailer. Don't rely on the landing gear alone. Also note that there may be damaged floor planks under an existing load. Therefore, you must exercise extreme caution when unloading. Ramps or inclines pose special problems for forklifts. If a loaded forklift must travel over an incline that's greater than 5%, always drive with the load uphill. This means driving up and backing down. When traveling with an unloaded forklift, always drive with the forks downhill, backing up the ramp and driving down it. There will be times when you need to leave the forklift unattended. In these cases, the forks should be lowered to the ground, the controls put in neutral, the power shut off, and the brakes set. If you're parked on an incline, chalk the wheels. Be courteous to your coworkers. Never park a forklift near pedestrian walkways, stairways, or in front of a fire exit. During the course of your shift, you may have to refuel the forklift or recharge or change the battery. This should only be done in a designated area. There are four important steps to follow before beginning these processes. First, turn off the forklift before refueling. Second, put on the proper personal protective equipment. This may include eye protection, gloves, and an apron. Third, no smoking. Fourth, know the location of designated areas in your company containing an eye wash station, shower, or emergency facilities. When changing batteries, position the forklift in the changing area and set the brake. Make sure the battery is secure before lifting it. Stand clear as the battery is moved in and out of position. 
When charging a forklift battery, make sure that the ventilation system is working properly. If the battery is being charged on the forklift, uncover the battery compartment to prevent heat or hydrogen gas buildup. The battery charger must be turned off before connecting it to the battery. Make sure metal objects do not come in contact with the battery terminals. A typical forklift battery contains a solution of diluted sulfuric acid. This battery grade acid solution is approximately 30% sulfuric acid and 70% water. Because the acid in a forklift battery is already watered down, occasionally adding water poses minimal hazards when the correct precautions are taken. Because battery acid is corrosive, precautions include protective eyewear and proper skin protection. The addition of water to concentrated sulfuric acid creates a heated reaction to such a degree that the act of diluting concentrated sulfuric acid must be carried out in a controlled environment where the risk of explosion is minimized. However, batteries do not contain concentrated sulfuric acid and are not subject to the same heat conditions or explosion hazards. If the forklift is powered by propane, refueling means simply changing tanks. Before you begin, close the fuel line valve, but in this case, keep the engine running. This will prevent any propane from being left in the fuel line. Carefully remove the empty tank. If propane comes in contact with your skin, it can freeze it in an instant. Next, check the valve and seals. If there's a leak in the system, you should be able to smell the propane. If a leak is detected, remove the forklift from use until it can be repaired. Propane tanks should be stored in an open area to prevent leaking gas from accumulating. Propane is heavier than air and will settle to the ground. Escaped propane is a potential fire hazard. When fueling a gas or diesel unit, make sure you're using the proper fuel. Always turn the engine off. Do not overfill the tank. Replace the fuel cap before starting the engine. If fuel is spilled, follow proper safety procedures for cleaning it up. If you find any problems with the forklift during the refueling or recharging process, the unit must be repaired before returning it to service. If you're using a forklift outdoors or at a construction site, you're bound to encounter rough, uneven terrain Pneumatic tires are used on these forklifts because they are more forgiving, making the unit easier to handle. This helps increase safety and stability. Walk-along units, such as motorized hand trucks or pallet trucks, should always be operated at a normal walking pace. When picking up a load, the unit should come to a stop too. When entering an elevator or a confined area, always put the load end forward. Some units may be designed to include a rider. If so, a standing platform must be in place. When using a high lift unit, you must always wear proper fall protection equipment. A safety platform must be firmly secured to the lifting carriage and or forks. An overhead guard must be in place to protect you from falling objects or other overhead hazards. If you're on the raised platform, you must be able to turn the power off from your location. Never travel with the operator or the load raised. If using a two-person unit, communication between the operator and the person in the lift must be maintained at all times. Forklifts. They are our industry's workhorses. Moving, storing, stacking, and loading everything from raw materials to finished product. As a forklift operator, you must always keep one goal in mind the safe, efficient operation of your unit.